Welcome back to Gasani Hall in North Wales. You've seen us here before, and you'll see us here again. You may have even seen this day before over on Field Sports Channel. Two cameramen filming his every move. He's also got to contend with Johnny ribbing him mercilessly. Gamekeeping right. here for months and months and months. The pheasants are lovely. <laughs> James, or DC as he's affectionately known, has done a fantastic job this season. Whether it's looking after season shooters or the young shots with Mr. Carey. This estate has gone from strength to strength in 2021. I'm back here today with a mixed team of James's friends. And I'll be continuing my season of steel with the whole Hydro Wad. Good morning. Welcome back to Wales. We're here at Gasani today. It's James's day. We're supposed to be shooting with him. There's been a few changes of plan, a lot of changes of plan this last week. But most importantly, it is not currently raining. Just going to prove my theory that the Welsh only say it rains to keep people out. Guys, let's rock and roll. It's breakfast time. It's going to be one of those days, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Kasani uh, shoot. Thank you for coming on behalf of James. You've drawn your pegs, please try to remember your numbers. I know this sometimes can get a bit harder as the day goes around. We are planning at least three, maybe four drives. There'll be lots of partridge, particularly on the first drive. <laughs> <laughs> you joke. And so it was time to begin. There's always excitement in the air on the way to the first drive. But at this point, for James, his entire year's work was going to get judged by his friends. The pressure was on. I'm not going to stand behind you. Oh, that's not good. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. no. I've heard things. No, because I, I go to pieces when people stand behind me. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> How close do I need to be to have this effect? Oh, well, This sort of distance? No, no, 30 <laughs> yards is enough to put, to put the fear of God into me. <laughs> oh, I do love these pegs. I mean, I'm, I'm now professionally just go on, go on about stuff, but I don't go on about it. This peg is the tits. No. This peg is of extreme quality, very luxury. You can't say the tits. Somebody might take offense. This peg is very good. Very good idea. Well done, James. Uh, product placement of the day. New custom fit guards. <sighs> Electric custom fit guards. I actually put them on this morning just to check that they fit. They are brand new. I said I wasn't gonna try them until today, which I now realized would be stupid if they um, weren't perfect, but what do you expect? And so far, I'm mean, utterly bizarre. I can't, wow. I'll give you my thoughts across the course of a day. It's the first time I've properly had them in. But if you want to buy a pair without my thoughts, because TGS 10 for 10% off. If I get a gun out, actually, it's probably wise that <laughs> we're here game shooting. Continuing the steel escapade. Well, I was really tempted to try some new lead cartridges. And I realized that once you make a change, just forget about it. Like your ex. Led's dead to me now. Ooh. Right, there are some very good shots here. So first things first is everything sounds really weird through my ears. Right, I'm used to just having everything kind of muffled and numbed with a tiny valve so I can hear people talk close to me and distant pops sound distant. This is very personal. I feel like I'm stood with the guy in front of me who absolutely nailed a very nice pigeon. Seeing as the majority of birds are going either left or to my right, it seems wise to step to my right. I should have shot that. Would have been your highest bird to date. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> That's the, the beauty of game shooting is you don't, you don't have to. This, pegs like these are my favorite. To be fair, sharing the peg with Jim last time is 
Sharing a peg with someone is very much preferable. Should actually pay attention to why we're here. But to stand and actually watch and enjoy people enjoying themselves, especially a team of guys like this who quite clearly know what they're doing, it's enjoyable. Right? It's, a, it's a hard thing to, to put into words that the actual killing, I mean, it might be, it's, it's, it's the punctuation mark at the end of the, the hunting sentence, but it's, it's not why we go game shooting. It's a, such a communal thing. It does sort of spark something inside us that it's very hard, very intangible. It's hard to put into words until you come and you stand here and you just be a part of it. With a broken gun, not really that fussed about pulling the trigger. Although I did because I shot that partridge with my one shot. What I find strange is that this moment, I thought, and I was told by older men that would, would come, I thought would take longer. Uh, the fact that you uh, have stood in front of me, Sash, know, you know the birds are about to come. Anyway, before the birds so if rudely interrupted, I was saying, I remember old boys saying to me, older boys when I was a young man, younger man, saying to me, there'll come a point where you're just happy to stand and watch and you'll stand a gun with a broken drive and not feel the urgent need to shoot everything or anything. I think probably because, you know, we filmed quite a few of the shoots I've been on over the last few years that actually that, that time's come a lot quicker because I've got to relive and each of those shots was just that little bit more intense or memorable. I don't know, it seems to have sort of super speeded my, I don't know, calming down, growing up, whatever the phrase is. Over yeah, the top of that as well. And that's that, a nice little drive. I must admit, I shot appallingly on all of the pheasants, <laughs> but I didn't miss a partridge. So, you know, obviously by the time it's edited, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have missed nothing, right, Sash? Sometimes it takes a drive to get into the swing of things. Or it was just my lizard brain telling me the partridge just tastes better than pheasant, so pay more attention on those. For the rest of the day, spurred by a conversation over breakfast, we directed our focus onto British shooting etiquette. There's some ducks in this one. And over the course of this drive, we're going to talk about some on-peg etiquette stuff. We touched on it last week. The responsibility of shooters to shoot wounded birds to make sure, ensure clean kills. That's the, the point, right? But we've been asked a few times to, to talk about, you know, what is acceptably high? What is acceptable? What is a low bird? What is yours? What is not yours? So I suppose we'll, we'll talk about that right now. The general rule is um, different everywhere you go. What is yours? Well, it's a fairly simple thing that if it's flying directly over your neighbor's peg, it's probably theirs. If it's flying towards them, it's probably theirs. There's a, an element of common sense that comes into it. Uh, generally speaking, if you stand and look forward, you're the, 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 the actual, center pattern of your eyes will be what's yours. You know, you could think about it and go, well, it's an exact sort of 30 degree angle. But when you look forward, your eyes, everything that isn't blurry is about there and that's about where you should be looking. If you're actively there going, hmm, I think that could be mine over there, it probably isn't. High, as I've said, they now say on most shoots, shoot what pleases you. And if it pleases you to get stuck into a 15 yard pheasant, I don't necessarily think that there's any disrespect there potentially i mean if you're on a high bird shoot perhaps it's a bit silly that you shouldn't be doing that but providing you shoot your fair share of birds doesn't make any difference probably not probably not because at the end of the day i don't want to say the, the birds don't care but at the end of the day the birds is getting shot whether it's, it's low or high providing that it's a clean death and it's that that is the respectful thing you can do and people say it's disrespectful to shoot a lower bird i'm not sure why that would be i mean i'm probably hanging out with you know too many people from different countries with very different views. And I've, I've definitely count myself probably more in the liberal camp than, than most people in my friendship circle or in this community. But I think there's, there's certain things that don't make sense in our world. And there's certain things we can do to respect game. And in this country, obviously getting dressed correctly and acting correctly on a game shoot is part of the respect process. But I think a lot of that is as much giving respect to the keeper and the people you're with as much as the birds themselves. I was chatting to an American mate of mine and his 
His, his argument in the conversation was simply, look, you don't need a tie for you to respect the bird. And he's very true. And I suppose there's a lot of cultural, cultural respect and honouring the past and the people you're with more than respecting the birds by doing it. I, I, I don't know. I, I genuinely, I'd love your thoughts in the comment section because it's something that has increasingly confused me. Uh, how to hold the gun? Again, I put something on Instagram about this and interestingly, most people now, and didn't really used to see this in the past, will stand there with a gun at the ready the whole drive. I know that comes from clay shooting and, and genuinely just a, a new era of safety. However, I remember distinctly when I was younger, guns stood, not with a gun broken, but with a gun loaded like this. And where the safety was on, now nowadays most people run with manual safeties because we're using our clay guns, uh, they would raise the gun up to the shot when a bird would come, present and shoot. And I think that's, it's changed, that that is no longer the common thing. In fact, by far, I think to a lot of clay shooters, it's bizarre that they would do that in the first place because you are inherently swinging through the beaters in the line. Ducks away, Sash. Well, I didn't see any come down. I don't know if that's an indicator of anything. <laughs> Those ducks did exactly what they did last time, flew high in a couple of packs straight over the line. I think there's, on the respect line of shooting low birds, I think it's also your duty to not shoot anything that is even on the edge of range. I remember doing a podcast with a, or a film with a wildfowler a few years ago, and their theory was that you owe it to what you're shooting at, A, to have a proficient, a, appropriate equipment and proficient skill to bring it down cleanly. Basque's here. I know I said that before, but Gary Doolan from Basque is here. That's quite exciting. And James Marshall from Field Sports Britain. They have a YouTube channel, you know, apparently. I think that first drive I was over leading the pheasants quite away. I forget that these are fast and that what does hold that shot together for a while. Lead required is minimal by comparison to other cartridges that are available in the world of both steel and lead. The only good ones of which are obviously whole cartridge. But it is interesting that it's probably psychosomatic, is that the right word? It's probably in your head, because the reality is, is when you try like 30 different types of clay cartridge, providing they're all within like a two or 300 feet per second range, apart from subsonics, out to normal ranges, it doesn't make that much difference. So probably just me. I seem to have found pheasants this drive. Interestingly, I have a theory that the way you hold the gun and the way you act on a game shoot, uh, as I said earlier, probably changed over the course of your career. Not the more you shoot, but the more you then have shot, the calmer you are, the more you can control your head, the more that you, are, you don't feel the need to stand there for the entire drive like this. But you know you have time to close the gun, move your feet, get on a bird, address it, and shoot it correctly usually with a second barrel, um, as I've been doing with pheasants all day. But it's just an observation that I would like your thoughts upon as well. This is one of those thinking man's game shooting videos. Yeah, I was over leading those pheasants on the last drive by a factor of about 50. Being on the end of the line is what you make of it. To watch a good team of guns shooting is a real pleasure. And it's doubly so to make the most of the opportunities when they arrive. A fantastic drive over. I collared DC for a very subtle business plug. That was a good drive. Like that went exceptionally. It was it was good before, but yeah. then some of those birds on a still day have definitely yes, got yeah. stronger. We've been through it a few times, leaves off the tree, so it makes a big difference. Yeah. That white pheasant didn't make enough of a height to get shot at. Oh, I was desperate. Shame. Desperate. <laughs> Well, I don't want, your, I don't want your, your lovely little daughter crying. No, no, thank Even you. for 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, no, it's good. So uh, we'll have a lemon this now and do a few more. What's the plan after? Uh, go shoot Tilson's, which is halfway up the drive. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little clump, but there's plenty in there. And then we might finish with some ducks. How do people buy days at Grisani Hall? <laughs> is it Grisani Hall or just Grisani Shoot? Just Grisani Sporting Club. Grisani Sporting Club Limited. Yeah. That's a very romantic name, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, just get in contact, Facebook, anything. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just get hold of me, ring me. Yeah, uh, drop us There'll a line a and we'll put here. you in touch.
here, my mobile number would be just there. Yeah, it's a, isn't that it a, a pay line, isn't it? Yeah. From your yeah, previous yeah, career. Three, three quid a minute. <laughs> And to have the cake that is the memory of that drive, glazed by a lovely Elevenses, just made it all the better. Oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. Try to catch me howling at the moon. Update on the CFG electrical ear the protection. At first they were a touch disorientating and then I figured out how they worked by pressing the button multiple times and you know, not actually reading the manual they sent through. Um, and on the right setting in each ear, it's really nice. You can hear people talking. And the start that was a bit odd. And now it's not, I mean, I have nothing more to say than it's just very nice. I feel it's civilized. Speaking here of civilized, whilst we're stood here in this beautiful Welsh parkland, in front of my clock, this is a proper old fashioned drive. I feel desperately in need of a side by side right now. Extended chokes are now acceptable on a shoot, on a game shoot. I find that bizarre that A, I am doing it, and B, that I'm comfortable, and C, that nobody's even mentioned it. How to act at the end of a day. Uh, saying thank you is good. Being thankful for what you've had and being honest and having conversations with the keeper about what you enjoyed and not what you didn't enjoy because there shouldn't be anything that you didn't enjoy. That's important. Tipping. Tipping is interesting. Tipping has moved on in the last few years. I don't feel utterly qualified to talk on it now because it has changed so much and people's expectations of tips change whether it's a, a private shoot or a commercial shoot uh, and tipping what you're happy with to pay for the day sometimes isn't enough and sometimes it's too much. Once again guys in the comments section for your thoughts. It used to be £20.100 it's now very much £30.100 territory in, or in that ballpark. Thank you letters are nice or you know a thank you email. A next day thank you of some sort of means whether that is antiquated on paper or a modern email phone call to say thank you is important because this is a privilege to be allowed to go come somewhere like here onto a private estate and I understand that there's an American who will comment who will say yeah but if it was public land you wouldn't have to say thank you to anyone and I suppose that's about it really in terms of etiquette don't shoot other people's birds unless you know them in which case it can be quite entertaining and even then as long as it's done, done it with some respect and obviously safety in mind because the last thing you want to do is shoot someone's head off. That was fast and furious, and a good bird, and I missed it completely. My head was very much in the clouds. to the threes. On some of the bigger stuff, those fours actually don't quite have the beans that you want, but we're talking big stuff like very doable birds. Cool. So for what was a pretty unassuming drive, this go, this has turned into a, a lovely drive. It's a beautiful place to stand, but I didn't expect it to turn into really good birds and plenty of them. Just goes to show that Appearances can be deceiving. Like, for example, I look intelligent, and as you all know, it's a lie. We made a lot of uh, a mess of cartridges, and we didn't hit many pheasants. I'm going to say the collective we, because Sash is part of the team. That was a fantastic drive, actually. There's some lovely birds there to be had. They fly well off the back of it. Yeah, yeah. They're coming out of tree height. There's some great pheasants. And mate, I thought when they all busted out the side, I was like, oh well. <laughs> there were still heaps in there, though. Mate, really good. Oh, it's um, not a good drive. The end of the day was marked by a small duck drive. 
and I managed to convince James to trust his epic team to handle the drive, whilst we shared a few shots on pack together. I'm gonna see you in action now. Oh yeah. Uh, what number are you, mate? Four, six, six. six. I need five, six, seven, and eight with me, please. There you go. It's enough for you, isn't it? Yeah. Deals. Yeah. That's all I need. Hold oh, on. Need. There you go. There you go. Two left and right. Yeah. Two left and right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I should have them really loading for you. Well, yeah. We well, take two, so you can load. No, your... no, no. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm doing this properly. Yeah, oh, sir. Got the gun. Why do you have to be left-handed? It's going to make this well, very awkward. It makes it really easy. Just boom, chuck two in, deals. Yeah, but it's supposed to be this way around. I'm on my left, my left hand's trained for bottom barrel. You'll have to do the old swapper room. It's a bit big for me to stuff in a hole. Well, I'm more of a 28 ball guy. <laughs> this is possibly the nicest gun I've ever held. Well, I'll try and shoot something with it. I will. Try and do it justice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everybody can make a start, please. We're hoping the ducks sort of circle around between the two ponds. For a moment. For, for, for five minutes. Look at Dave, what a regal, majestic beast. I mean, that is the finest working- Mongrel. Springer poodle. <laughs> Miniature poodle. Oh, geez. Ooh, his dad it's was a shooting shit. instructor, don't you know? That was exceptionally well shot. Thank you. They're coming down the valley. To be fair, it was there. She just hand it back now, she <laughs> just did it. No, 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 come on, smash a couple more. There you go, he's over. Oh! Mate, you can shoot! Well, I don't know, but uh, the, the gun is beautiful, by the way. And that was a good shot. He'll be down in a sec. Yeah. Hit him with the first hard. We felt it was probably stretching the range of what steel can do, <laughs> just so you were aware. <laughs> These are a bit more like it, though. Yeah, Missed with the first back end, did it with that second shot. Some Mate, these are exceptionally good. I like them. I'm glad, well, I thought, I might actually ask for a shot in a sec, just so I can see if they actually hit anything. Sorry. Oh, what, really? Uh, How do you follow up. this man? You say he's no. a gamekeeper, he actually spends all his time, you know. Shooting ducks. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they're so high. <laughs> yeah. This is the first pass ever, but I've given him a warn up every night for the last two months. I think they might be a little bit beyond my talent, mate. No, they're not. Don't, I've seen you shoot. Oh, he's hit that. That's it. Tumbled in. They That'll do. Shells. I'll give you that. Right, they are actually quite good. I, I heard the pallet it's ripped through its wings. Yeah, yeah I heard that. But to be fair, I think at that stage it's probably. Yeah. Lovely, beautifully stopped. They need some speed. They need some lead. Out in front. Go, 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 go. Oh, we're out of the threes. We're now down onto the fours. <laughs> uh, beware that you'll lose about 15 yards with these. Okay. If we stand back to back, we won't miss the, the darting, fleeting ducks. They're going to be lovely. This is beautiful. My it's... silver pig. Oh, the I problem is like it makes one. a pig. Like, once you've shot one of those, and you just... Yeah. But it's an instantaneous gun snob thing. And you well, feel guilty. It could well be, but I haven't shot that well for a long time. Wait, I, I heard rumour you weren't that great from you and your own mouth, which means you are modest, which... <laughs> I'm no, not gonna doesn't pick you don't? Up, am I? Well, you don't strike me as modest. <laughs> Mate, that was exceptionally well shot. Nice, no, to, nice to see. Days like these are very special. Sharing time with friends, both new and old, in a beautiful piece of countryside, and bringing home dinner gives you an experience you can't explain in words. Gasani does make for a magical setting to do this in. And James, as well as being a shark with his shooting abilities, puts on a fantastic day. Oh, and go Flinttown United.